Chapter 6, Section 3, we're going to see if we can get through this. Uh, it's a lot to get in 15 minutes, we'll see if we can do it. But it's all about vectors. We're going to introduce vectors tonight. So, uh, to first look at, we're looking at what a line segment is. So, back to geometry. And a directed line segment has an initial and terminal point. Um, so, it has a length or magnitude. And so when you look at these line segments in geometry, the length that could be called the magnitude, and it uses the, this notation, the double vertical lines. Uh, so this would be line segment PQ. It's like a ray, but it's just a segment, uh, and then it has a, a length. The equivalent directed line segment. So the two line segments are the same if they have the same magnitude. To find the magnitude, it's just using the distance formula. How long is the distance of it? And then the same direction, which is like the slope. And then later on, we'll find the direction using some of our trig. And so if we have these two vectors, uh, vector u and vector v, so when we look at vectors, they're bold letters, bold lowercase letters. It would come from the directed line segment PQ, and then vector v is from the directed line segment RS. So from point P to point Q is a directed line segment, but we can call that the vector u. And so this is our initial and terminal. And so if we want to see if these initial and terminals are the same, we need to actually first find the magnitude. So that's just, just the distance formula. So this is going to be 3 minus 0 squared plus 1 minus 0 squared. And we square root that, and you get the square root of 10. We do the same thing for RS. And so we're doing 3 minus 2 squared plus 5 minus 2 squared and we get square root of 10 again. And so PQ, now we can look at the actual slopes. So this one right here is going to be 1 third, it's easy to 1 minus 0, 3 minus 0. This one right here, 3 minus 2 over 5 minus 2, so we get 1 third again. So therefore U equals V because they have the same length and the same direction. Even though there are two different spots in the coordinate plane, they're equivalent directed line segments. So for vectors, we have a standard position. It looks similar to our trig standard position. It just has the initial point at the origin. We have component form, and this is we're going to use a lot. Component form of a vector in standard form, um, written using the terminal point. So if you have v1 and v2 being like your x and your y, then the component form uh, v is written with these kind of like the less than and greater than symbols. And so if we have some distance here, v1, which is like the change in x, and we have some distance here, v2, which is like the change in y, then the line segment from the initial to the terminal is going to be using this component form. So when you have a component form, it's nice because you're given the change in x and change in y. A zero vector has the initial and terminal point on the origin. So there's not much there. You, you get the, the zero vector, zero, zero. There's no movement to that. Uh, and so then we have component form. If you're given, if you're given these two points, p is p1, p2, and q is q1, q2. If you want to find the component form of that, you actually need to go through and subtract. So we do like the uh, initial would be P, terminal would be Q, and so we actually have to start with Q. That's an important thing. So we Q1 minus P1, comma, Q2 minus P2, and that's how you'd find it. So you're just finding the change in X and change in Y. And then to find the magnitude, you actually are going to do the square root of these changes. And so we're going to do the Q1 minus P1, square that, then add. So it's just the distance formula applied to that component form. And then if it is a unit vector, is if we call this vector V right here, if the magnitude of V is equal to 1, we call it a unit vector. And so it just has to have a length 1. And so another example here is if we have the negative 2, 3, and a terminal point, negative 7, 9. 
So first thing I want to do is find the component form. So I'll do a negative 7 minus a negative 2, and then 9 minus 3. And so we get negative 5, 6. And so that's the component form. And then we can use this to find the magnitude. So we want to find the magnitude. Let's call this vector v. So the magnitude or the vertical lines will show the magnitude is found by just doing the square root of, and I square each number. So this will be 25 plus 36. So 61, the square root of that, which is approximately 7.81. And so that's how you do uh, the magnitude, to find the magnitude given the component form. It's nice because you just know the change in x and the change in y. So vector operations, uh, a scalar occurs. You have k times your vector u, so like k times u. You can also do it in like k times our component form, so let's make u1, u2. And then we could also just multiply through. So it would be k u1 comma k u2 in component form. And so for vectors we usually use these u, v, w, it's tend to be where we're at for our vectors, our variables, but it doesn't really matter. But it's the lowercase in bold. Um, if k is negative, the direction change. So the scalar, the negative value is just the direction in which the line segment is moving from p to q or q to p, you could say. Vector addition, so if we have like u1, u2, again these are just my change in x's and change in y's v1, v2. So if I want to add them, the new component form is going to be u1 plus v1 comma u2 comma or plus v2. So you just add the like portions. You add the change in the horizontal movement, the u1 and v1, and then change in the vertical movement, u2 and v2, and that's your new component form. The same thing as subtraction, the difference, you're just going to add the negative. So you're going to apply that negative scalar to it. So let's do an example here. Let's call this 1, 2, and vector v, let's call that 3, 1. So we already have component form. We would not need to find that here. And so we first want to find 2u. So to find that, I just multiply 2 through the u vector, and I get 2, 4. And then I want to subtract. I need to find 3v, and I multiply it 9, 3. And then I can just subtract the like portions. So 2 minus 9 is negative 7, and then 4 minus 3 is 1. That's the new component form for this operation. And a parallelogram law uh, is a result of vector is the diagonal. So what we're trying to show here is that we have some vector u and then some vector v. If you want to add those, you want to line them up. So even if I had like v over here, v was the second over here, I would take it grab it and I move it to line the terminal with the, um, with the initial and then the result of adding them is going to be the diagonal or from the initial to the final terminal would be u plus v and it doesn't matter which spot I put it at I could have moved the v line right here I, I could have moved v down here as well and then put u there and I'm going to get the same result and so the parallelogram is a way of drawing to show the uh, operation these properties I'm not really going to go over basically the properties you've learned in the past apply to vectors the only one you might want to look at here is you have the magnitude of some scalar times the vector you could pull that scalar out as the absolute value times the vector and that would um, work as well Okay, the unit vector, um, a little confusing for students to get a hold of this, what we're actually doing. Unit vector in the direction of V. V is a, some vector, it has some length, we have no idea what the length is, and it, but it has a direction as well. And so the unit vector is just saying, let's, let's write this vector V, but instead of having a length, whatever V is, let's change it so it has a unit vector, which means it has a length of 1. Uh, and to do that, the unit vector is found by taking the vector v and dividing by the magnitude. So basically you're dividing out the, the length of the magnitude. And so the first thing to do is find the magnitude. So let's do that for this example. Let's find a unit vector of 7, negative 3. 
And so the first thing we need to do is find the, if we call this vector v. Let's find the magnitude of v. And so to do that, we're going to do a square root of 7 squared of 49 plus negative 3 squared, which is 9. We get a square root of 58. And so the unit vector can be found by just taking the vector v and dividing by the magnitude. So the vector v is the component form, the 7, negative 3. And you're dividing each portion by the square root of 58. And then that would be your final component form. And that's all you're doing for that. But the, what this means is if we have 7, negative 3, so I actually plot that 7, negative 3, we're down here. So this would be like the vector v. What we're doing is saying instead of drawing that vector, we're going to find u, which just has a length 1. So u would be the length 1. So what is the x value and y value? x and y, it gives us a unit vector in that same direction. That's what the unit vector is. So we also have some unit vectors that are special. We have a unit vector that's 1, 0, and we have uh, one that's 0, 1. If you think about these, 1, 0 means there's no vertical movement, there's only 1 to the right, so it's on the x-axis. And we actually, these are the, the standard unit vectors, and that's what we call i is the 1, 0, and j is the 0, 1. And so i is the horizontal movement, j is the vertical movement. And so you can apply these to the component form to create a new form. Uh, know how that i here is not the italicized, it's not the imaginary number. It uh, deals with a vector. So linear, linear combination of unit vectors and so if we have i again is 1, 0, j is 0, 1, and we're given some vector v, which is v1, comma v2. These are the horizontal and vertical movements. Then we can combine these two and say that v1 is the movement, and if I multiply it to the horizontal direction, or um, yeah, the horizontal movement. So basically, in like the magnitude or the horizontal magnitude times the direction. Add it to v2 times 0, uh, 1. And so the v1 and v2 are like scalars, is what it really is like. So you multiplied out the scalar to write this equation. And so we could end up writing this as v1i plus v2j. And that's the same thing. So it doesn't really matter if you're using the component form or the variable. So u is a vector with initial point negative 2, 6 and terminal point negative 8, 3. And so we can write the linear combination form for this. Uh, again, these are the points, so we are, do not have the component form. So the first thing we'll be doing is to find the component form. So we got to do the negative 8 minus a negative 2. So we're finding the horizontal movement, comma, 3 minus 6. And make sure you do terminal minus initial. So for this one, we get negative 6 comma, negative 3. That's our component form. And so then we can write that as negative 6i plus negative 3j. And that's the same thing. Just know that these two forms are equivalent, whether it's a linear combination or component form. I'm actually going to stop this here and call this part A because I'm going to run out of time. And then we'll be a part B for the 6-3 video that you also need to watch.